in our prior video, we created a complex schema here for, or at least for a complex flat file. And we saw how we used the generator to build this, which was a mix of positional and delimited fields. This is what our flat file looks like. And we also tested this to make sure it validated against the schema. So now in this video, our goal will be to drop this file through and process it through our little system. And so what we have to do is to map this data from this format to our standard PO format. So in a prior video, we'd created a project called PO Maps, and we only have one map in it right now. So we're going to come up here and first of all, let's check our references. Our references right now point to PO schemas, but not to PO schema generated. So um, since we use the schema generator, the schema from our last video is actually in a different project than the schema that we used in the prior video. So we do need to make a new reference here. So I'm going to go to projects and then schema generated, click add to put it down here and then click OK. Then we're going to add our new map. So we're going to say right click add new item and then we're going to click maps and there's only one choice for maps. What do we want to call our map? Which gets into the naming convention issue. Um, See, actually, before I, I'm going to cancel right here. I want to see what I call my other map. So you want to be consistent in how you name things, like your schemas, your orchestrations, your maps. And we can do a special topic on that later. So again, I'm going to do here, add new item, uh, click map, and then I'm going to call this map um, complex flat file to standard PO. Complex. PO complex flat file to standard PO. So here's my map. Just to make a little room on the video, I'll get rid of the output box down there. I'll click open source schema and go to the references, which will be the generated schema we just built in the prior video, which was called the complex something. And there it is flat file purchase order complex. And on the right side, we'll go to our standard PO, which is in the different project, which was PO schemas, and it will be standard purchase order. Okay, so again, let's map. Um, well, I wish there was one button you could just hear click to, that would expand everything, but I don't know that that exists. So you just have to kind of scroll through here and click every one of these buttons to open them. So here we have data header, okay, order date. Now date's going to take some special manipulation. So you have to decide if you want to do this using the, the tools over here. I'm going to pin that open for just a second. And for to make more room, I'm going to hide what's on the right side of the screen here. Um, you can either concatenate it or use actually use the, the substring functions and split out the date piece by piece or you could write a VB script to do this. Um, just to show you all the functoids here, I think I'll do it the functoid way. So just to give you an illustration of what we need to do here, we need to take this date and convert it to a date that looks like this. Okay, so we're going to have to take the first two bytes. Actually, we'll have to do this. We'll have to start here. So we need to take, that's position one, three, and five. Okay, so we'll come here and we'll look for the substring function, which is called string extract. We'll put on here. Um, when I double click it, it'll go to the functoid properties, and it says that this functoid has exactly three parameters. So let's read what they are. The, uh, use it to extract a string specified by the start and end position of an input string. This functoid requires three input parameters, a string field, a start, and an end. So the string field will be order date. That will be the first parameter. So now when I double click it on again, double click on it again, you'll see here the X path to the element that will be the first parameter. And the other two parameters will be numbers that I'm going to type in right here. Okay, so when you want to add, these are called constants. So this little square box here adds the constants, and then the X can delete them. And you can actually move these fields around if you want to. But it's important that the string needs to be first in the list. And 
if I double click this, I want to go, let's go back to our example, I want the year, which is position 5 for length of 4. Okay, and I'm assuming this is 1 based and not 0 based, but I don't actually remember right now. Actually, since it's C sharpish, I think it is going to be 0 based. So I think we're going to have to put a 4 there. Okay, now we're going to do string extract again. And one more time. So this is going to be year, month, day. And they're all going to have to have the order date first. Okay, so if we want to get the month now, we want the first position, which is going to be offset 0 for a length of 2. Or we could have actually used the left function as well. And then the third one will be the month, which will be offset 3 minus 1 would be 2. Wait, 0? Actually, that's not right. I can't even count here. Okay, miscounted. So this is 3. Let's just do it this way. So, and since we're 0 based, let's do it this way. So the month is going to be position 3 for length of 2. I'm going to go back to year and fix that. It's actually position 6 for a length of 4. Okay, so now we want to concatenate all these back together. Um, so this is going to be year, month, day. And if we look at this one, I'll show you one other thing you can do here. It's kind of a neat trick. If I bring up my properties window, you can put a little word on each one of these. Uh, you can label them. So there's year. Got to click on the line. Go back to properties, month, and then the last one, day. So then, in the future, if you ever click on this, it helps you to see, remind you what you're dealing with. Okay, so now we're going to go to this functoid and see that label that we put on the line actually appears here, which makes this a little more useful. And so now we need to turn these around. Well, that's actually right. We want year first, then month, then day. But we also want a separator here, which will be a dash. And we need one here, which will be a dash. So basically what we're doing is we're inserting this dash and this dash. So we have the year, a dash, the month, the dash, and the day. Then we want to drag that over here to PO customer date. So on the right side, we have the standard XML date. Here is our PO comment. Here is that's our customer date. We still want the current date time, kind of like what we did before in a previous map. So we take the date time of today and put it here. Now, uh, this guy we didn't even have a PO number, so. We, in our system, we'll have to have some logic or something later that automatically generates PO numbers. So since he didn't have one, uh, let's just put a concatenate functoid here, and let's give it a value of uh, blank. Just we'll leave it null. Now again, you might want to turn these around, line them up, something like that. Remember, you can scroll here. Okay, so now we need to get the ship to information. So ship to name, street, we'll go to address one, city, state, zip. This is the easy part. Country. He didn't give us a courier, so I think like what we did in the prior video, we just assume that he's going to be UPS ground if he didn't give us this information. So the ship to courier will be UPS. And the method will be ground. And now we're going to map the bill to data. So name, street, state, I miss city here, zip and country. And this guy didn't give us a customer number, so we'll just actually leave that one off. 
Then we have our item header. Part number is product number. Part description is name. Quantity ordered is quantity. Unit price is price. Comment is here. And this guy didn't give us ship date, so we'll leave it blank. So we've now completed our map. We'll save it. I'll collapse the functoids now. Hide them, and then I'll bring my uh, Solution Explorer window back over here. Okay, now we can test this map with our dummy data. So let's go get the name of the file that we were working with, which was Purchase Order Complex. Go back to the map here. Right click Properties. And then the input will not be generate, it will be native, which will be a text file. And then the input will be this. And then we do right click. We can validate the map again first if you want to. And then we will do right click test map. And then we can slide over here, hold the con whoops. Says succeeded. But here we have an error. Exception caught. Cannot load source destination schema so and so. Either the file type, blah blah blah, or the project is not built. So what that means is we never did a build on this project after we added the schema. So we'll just simply come down here and do a rebuild on it, and that will generate the DLL for that project. I'm waiting on it to compile here. Okay, it succeeded. Now we come back and do a test map. And I see the word failure. Output error. The PO customer date is invalid. The value, we have a dash dash, is invalid according to the data type. So basically I messed up my concatenate here somehow. So just to see what it built, um, test map used. The output is stored in the following file. So it still built an output file even though it had a problem. And see here the date is totally goofus. So we have PO customer date equals dash dash. So my little concatenate idea here didn't work at all. So we're going to go back to the map and Apparently these are not pulling the right positions. Okay, I didn't read it close enough. Um, it says the end position, not the length. So see, in my head, I'm thinking VB script or something where you give it the start position and the length. So instead of giving it the length of 4, we need to change that to the ending position, which is 10. And then we'll do the same thing here. Zero length of 2. That one should be correct, so I don't know why that one didn't actually work. Let's see what happens next. And then here, 3 for ending at position 5. So we save that. We do a test map. We're probably going to get another error. But what I want to do is see the output data now to see if I made any difference. Aha. So you can see we're now we're getting at least some data here. So it is not zero based. Apparently it is one based because that slash should not be there. So we'll go back here again and we'll just change everything up by one. So this should be one through two. This should be 4 through 5. Okay, test map. Slide over, hit control and click. And now we have the correct date 2007 And notice down here in the output window, we don't have any errors. So in this video, we've created a map for our complex schema. And we used a couple of additional functoids to convert a date. In the next video, we'll continue this little practice scenario by actually dropping the complex file 
and having this map added to the receive port so that it maps properly. <laughs>